Hello everybody, Idre here, and today I am going to be doing a review of the new surprise Taylor Swift album, Folklore. Now going into this, um, my thoughts on Taylor Swift would have been a lot different 10 years ago than they are now. Around 10 years ago, I probably would have just lumped Taylor Swift ignorantly in with many other of her contemporaries in the pop scene, such as Justin Bieber and Katy Perry, who are also seeing an explosion in popularity around that time. But I can safely say what really makes her stand out from her contemporaries is that she has evolved far from the very um, radio-friendly pop sound of the early 2010s, whereas a lot of the Katy Perry's of the world have been stuck in a pop vacuum ever since. Now, don't get me wrong, Katy Perry still has a lot of pop appeal. That's a huge part of her sound I, that is not going away on this record. And yes, the usual breakup themes, the stuff like that, does still make major appearances in this album, but she cleverly masks it up a lot more. Instrumentally, she does follow through with a quite different sound, and this is nothing new. I mean, ever since 2014's 1989, she has been kind of experimenting a little bit more, and in, with that album from 2014, she uh, brought in more 80s sounds, more synthesizers. And then on the last one, Lover, there was a bit of a return to form of her roots with the more country-oriented, ballady type material. And then on this one, we see her kind of introduce more folk rock, some of that more atmospheric production into this. And um, yes, it is um, well executed in many spots. It is not as well executed as several other artists out there that are doing similar things. But I do give Taylor Swift that point, that credit because a lot of her contemporaries from her time period, I guess, from that late 2000s, early 2010s, have not evolved too much since then, and have since found themselves repeating what they do time and time again, whereas Taylor at least makes an effort to change things up. And what shouldn't be surprising to anybody is that, yes, Taylor Swift has some of the best production in the industry currently. Not only that, but this album did break records right off the bat, breaking the records of the amount of female streams in a single day on Spotify. So I have to give that to her. Whatever she is doing, she has made a name for herself that she has gotten so big that she probably could do whatever she wants and have success. So I actually give her props for that because there are a lot of artists who try something different and their whole fan base leaves. But not, not Swift. Taylor Swift still has... Pretty devoted fan base, clearly. And going into the track list, there are a good amount of songs that I think do add to the album, but there is also a good amount of duds. And I hate to say that because I like the sound. I really do like the direction that Taylor Swift is going for on this album. It is much more, I guess, um, likable then I say some of her previous albums, and I feel like it is much more honest. It's much more um, passionate than some of her previous works. Um, and it does continue this good change in sound that she's kind of going with. She's she's continues to experiment on here. I mean, the, the one, the opening track on here, is a good mood setter. It's a good opener, a good way to ease the listener into this album. But then you get a song like Cardigan, which does fit the vibe of the album. It fits the overall feel and atmosphere of it. But lyrically, I mean, it's very much a Taylor Swift song. Like I said, a lot of the breakup themes, a lot of that kind of stuff, still makes up a huge part of this album. Now, don't get me wrong... Just because somebody writes about that does not mean it's necessarily bad. Not at all. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that Taylor Swift is known. Like, like it's like, she's most known, I would argue, for her breakup songs. There's always a running joke with a lot of people about how many people's hearts she's broken. Because she sings about it on every album. But the reason why I have an issue with it, though, is because it's such a common occurrence at this point. That even though she does mask it up with clever metaphors, you know, kind of comparing a relationship to wearing a cardigan that you are used to is something that you're that you're used to. You feel good wearing, um, but it just still comes across as very much formulaic in a way, very formulaic of what Taylor Swift usually does on every other album to begin with. So it's not necessarily like this song brings much new to it. However. Like I said, 
it fits the vibe, the actual instrumental itself, the actual production. I enjoy it. I think Cardigan is not a bad song. I could definitely see this song being the big hit from this album, and I mean, it already kind of is. But from here, this is where the, the track list, you get some good songs, you get some not-so-good songs, but you actually get a good blend of styles here, I, I would argue. The last Great American Dynasty, one of the best songs on here. I do like the use of a drum machine on here. It does kind of liven things up a little bit. So not everything is a very mellow, more acoustic sound to it. There's sort of a sharp contrast there with having a drum machine, which is very electronic, very synthetic and unhuman, that in a weird way, it kind of fits the tone of the song. Talking up, uh, talking about like a tycoon and like their family and a dynasty Kind of having a more synthetic drum machine behind it goes to show how all that money you could still feel fake. And um, I really like that. I think this is some of the best lyrics on the album. Uh, some of the best themes on the album. It's a nice change of pace, a nice change of um, focus on a song. It's not just about her personal life. It's not just about her, um, say, relationships. So it's kind of nice to hear the last Great American Dynasty bring something new to the table so i definitely appreciate that as well but the bonavar track on the other hand doesn't really go anywhere i was kind of looking forward to that i've never been the biggest bonavar fan but i kind of figured having you know them on the track here would have actually done more but it just sounds really like bonavar doing a taylor swift song not the other way around so um this song to me you know Exile does not do much. I felt like it was a very bland attempt at sort of bringing in more of that indie tones to it. It was sort of like the stamp of approval if you get Bonavar on an album that you get that pass for making indie music in a way. But it's not the best executed. It's not one of the best on this album. And unfortunately, I was left a bit disappointed. And this theme does pop up quite a bit. There's a lot of songs where I, end up, I like the direction it's trying to go, but just the way it's executed ends up being very lackluster and um, not as passionate as I would have hoped for. But Mirrorball is an interesting song, because I feel like I should talk about that song. I reviewed that Phoebe Bridgers album earlier this year, and one of the things I brought up quite a bit on that album was how well Phoebe executed that vibe of that very much more atmospheric, folky sound, kind of a very dark take on that style. And Mirrorball and the song August kind of all follow that indie pop, very dark Phoebe Bridgers vibe. However, just not as well executed as Phoebe does it. Um, I actually enjoyed, I would, I would argue that I did enjoy Mirrorball and that I did enjoy August. More than many other tracks on this album, I really did enjoy the more, I guess, uplifting, more indie pop tones throughout it. I did like the more um, guitar-driven parts of the song. But once again, I feel like this is a sound that has been executed better even this year by Phoebe, by the 1975, by a lot of other artists. So unfortunately, even though I enjoyed Maribel, even though I enjoyed August, and I like the fact that Taylor Swift is exploring these soundscapes a little bit more, it's just not the best version that I've heard of this. Um, and this atmospheric sound, this atmospheric production does come up in a lot of songs, from Mad Woman to Invisible String to perhaps my favorite song on the album, This Is Me trying with some solid lyrics a good drum groove behind it really solid atmospheric production and synth pads and all about great song i really just like the overall tone of this song i really wish more songs had this feel to it a dark but pop friendly tone to it a lot of these songs with an album cover that looks like it could be from a black metal album i was expecting to have a darker tone do it but most of the songs really don't follow through with that but this is me trying does and that's probably how i'm going to end up that's probably how i'm going to end this segment of talking about tracks because i do think that that song was the most well executed more dark more atmospheric more kind of spooky song, but it worked. It definitely worked, and I do think that even though it does give me some Phoebe Bridgers vibes, I do enjoy that song quite a bit, and I gotta give her props for that. But overall, I was left very much somewhere in the middle with this album. 
I was I could definitely say confidently that this is probably one of my favorite projects from Taylor Swift because I feel like it is a good it's far away from that sound of the early 2010s pop music that she kind of fit right into during that time period and definitely sees her, you know, get more in depth, much more personal, much more passionate on a lot of these tracks and the overall sound, the atmosphere, the execution is pretty good. But there's always the downsides and like I said, not all of this feels that original. I've heard that this sound executed much better, so it's not like she is special in that sense. Some of the songs like Cardigan do fit the vibe, but don't necessarily fit it lyrically. It plays into many of the breakup themes that have been playing into Taylor's music since the beginnings. The songs with like the Bonavar track don't leave much of an impact on me, although I wish they would have. And a lot of these just feel like mood setters, not necessarily strong songs, unfortunately. So at the end of the day, how do I feel about this album? I w wasn't completely negative at all. I was really actually satisfied with the fact that Taylor Swift was able to get me to actually enjoy her album a bit more. Some of her previous albums I have not been too fond of. So hearing her kind of explore out of her comfort zone with a new, more new sound than what she's used to was something that I was kind of excited to hear. But at the end of the day, it did end up being just kind of middle of the road but a bit above expectations and i have settled on giving this album a solid six out of ten now there you go now you can see it anything above a five is good anything below a five is bad so technically yes this is a positive review this is better than average i think that she did actually do this sound justice however i don't necessarily feel like there was anything uniquely taylor swift about this album other than many of the flaws that i think can continue to ring through her music however i do give taylor swift some props for even trying this sound it was very nice i do think that overall the execution was very satisfying the production was great as well so overall taylor swift's album folklore the surprise album, which is already breaking records, I think it does deserve it quite a bit, because I will say this is Taylor Swift's best album I've heard in a while. But at the end of the day, I do think that this does just kind of follow through in a lot of ways with Taylor Swift's current trend of exploring new stuff. And unfortunately, I wish the execution was better, and that's why it gets a 6 and not higher. But that is it for now. Taylor Swift. Folklore. Goodbye.